up everybody what's cool what's groovy what's happening so I thought I'd jump on the bandwagon and start reviewing this ratchet series that I've been watching called love after lockup I know if you know what this show is about <laughs> you'll be like okay do you not have anything better to do with yourself but it is highly entertaining and it's pretty much the only TV show that I watch um so yeah let's get into this video if you're new here please hit bomb stomp as zonto on the subscribe button and hit the wee bell notification as well so you're notified about every time I post a new video now let's get right into this review I thought by this point there would be nothing to talk about at all we are now in episode 12 and yes this is the first one um, of all the episodes of season 2 that I'm reviewing and it's mainly because I would see other people's reviews and think that they're always really quite mean. Uh, people would be quite mean towards the people uh, on the show. And I don't want to be mean. Um, so I'm going to keep it mean free and I'm just going to point and state out the obvious but kind of with a twist. I'm kind of going to point out things that I see or have seen that maybe others would have not have noticed. Love After Lockup is a program. Um where people find love with people that are in prison so these are people that are in prison and they usually find them on this website called inmate.com and <laughs> inmate.com and there's these pictures whether it's the mock shots or other kind of pictures of these people that are inmates and people on the outside world they go on these websites and they find these people and spark a conversation maybe it starts off with letters then it ends up being phone calls which are very expensive by the way because when you phone to a prison um it's collect call so you're actually always paying the bill on that and it's and it's a lot that can turn into visits and then next thing you know some people are getting married to the person in prison listen it's a lot it's a lot but anyway i i had heard about people marrying people in prison but usually that was like people that knew each other before the person went into prison I never knew that people were looking for love on websites where you could only find inmates. I, my mind was blown completely. I think uh, it's pretty incredible. So anyway, let's get into this review. So we've got four couples. The first couple I'm going to start off with is Scott and Lizzie. Now, I've written some stuff down, so I'm going to just keep looking down at my notes. I was just even surprised about the amount of stuff I was able to write down because I thought by now, this is episode 12, things will kind of dry up here and there. No, no, actually, a lot still happened. We see Lizzie's friend uh, called Mel, and she also used to be in prison, and they go shopping together. And the friend's like, oh, wow, okay, so we're going shopping. Hmm, how are you affording all of this? And Lizzie's like, ah, I got Scott's credit card, it's fine. And I'm just looking at this woman like, you've come out of prison, you don't work, you're using this man's credit card. And, ah, and she goes on to say, he's my boyfriend. And then the girl is like, eh, no, he's your fiance. And actually when she said that, I even was like, I was actually proud of Lizzie for saying he's my boyfriend because I think it's kind of cool that she's really addressing him as that. And then the friend was like, no, he's your fiance. And I was like, oh yeah, I even forgot about that. I forgot these people were engaged. The real question is, is Lizzie in love with Scott? Or, I mean, obviously you have some love for somebody who is just spending money lavishly on you and is buying you all these things. Mm, but, mm, okay. Then they finish their inner boutique, buying stuff in a boutique. Very expensive. So first of all, when I look at them, I'm like, so why are Lizzie and Mel shopping in a boutique? You know you ain't got no money. Like, there's other places you could go to. You could go to Forever 21 since you want to look like you're 21. And she kind of does look like she's 21. She, that woman looks very young. She's always wearing those heart bracelets that used to be a thing but aren't anymore. But, you know, she's been in prison for 10 years. So, but yeah, she looks really young. I don't know what she's doing in this boutique. I mean, if you're trying to save money or if at least you're trying to be conscious of money, a boutique is the last place you'd ever want to go to. But, ah. Anyway. Turns out it's 
dollars and 14 cents this is crazy so the friend is just kind of standing there now I don't even know I I do not actually know how credit cards I, d I don't get credit cards because this man my man Scott over there he's got no money at all everything's maxed out remember when they had that dinner when she just came out of prison and her, one of his credit cards was declined yes and then now somehow he has other credit cards and he's still able to and the crazy thing about it is everything is maxed out um, Scott calls his longtime friend uh, girlfriend um, lady and she's like you're in way you're way in over your head which is so true and he's just like I don't want to lose her because she's gonna choose Jasmine over me and I'm like Jasmine is her daughter that is not weird to choose Jasmine over you at the end of the day you're just some random guy that kind of came along and the, the only one thing that's making her like so grateful to Scott it's all this money that he's spending on her, like buying her a car, even though she is not allowed to drive. And I just think it's a shame because she's not taking into consideration, like, where is this money coming from? Scott is a truck driver, okay? Not to say that truck drivers don't make good money, but is it the, I'm going to spend two grand in a boutique kind of money? I don't know. But anyway, it's very strange. I don't get how these credit cards are still going if this guy is barely able to pay for just cost of living but oh well then um jasmine's friend mel meets uh, not jasmine's friend lizzie's friend mel meets jasmine and she's like oh my gosh you guys look alike which is so true like when they're standing together they just look like twins and i just look at them and i'm like this is your daughter you haven't seen well you haven't really had that much contact in 10 years because you've been in prison you come out she's blossomed into this beautiful young woman she's basically your twin you're trying to be young all the time y'all look like sisters or something and the relationship is just not that great because you're not really looking at the future like Jasmine seems to have her head screwed on really really well she knows exactly what's needed in life she wants her mom to get a job she's always talking about it and it's like it doesn't matter that you haven't had a job for like a decade this is life this is how we do things right now you need a job you need to support yourself you cannot depend on anybody so yeah uh, it's interesting i'm not even gonna say anything negative about lizzie because jasmine shut it down jasmine was having none of it jasmine was like mom this is what it is this is what it isn't and she just kind of walked away she said a bunch of stuff walked away put up her fing middle finger to her mom i didn't think that was okay and lizzie was just like jasmine jasmine where are you going i'm like lizzie even 10 years ago if you wouldn't accept this kind of behavior from your kid 10 years ago you shouldn't be you know you shouldn't really be accepting it now like that behavior was unacceptable I get that she doesn't agree with what her mom is doing but still but anyway um that was her really um that was kind of their storyline Michael and Megan oh my goodness what what an actually actual mess so we take off where we left off the last time and Megan is coming down the escalator and Mike is standing there kind of waiting for her down there by the escalator doing a whole bunch of this stuff this man is nervous because he had a phone he had a conversation with his mom and his mom was like listen you have to get your priorities straight okay Sarah is your daughter's mom okay and at this point Michael doesn't even know that she's pregnant again but yeah that is your daughter's mom and that is your wife and you need to make it work and let all other things fall away there's no time for this foolishness okay get your act together right and you know do right by your wife she has this one conversation with michael and somehow everything is just making sense he's like mm -hmm, okay i'm gonna drop megan i'm gonna tell her you know i'm married da, 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 da. um she's gonna come out here 
fly all the way to New York, and then I'm gonna dump her. I don't know how he thought that was going to work, because obviously, I guess, once you see the person, it's obviously gonna be so much harder to actually dump her, and she's come all the way, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So she comes, she's all smiles, cause she's, she looks so in love, like, she looks so in love. And it's really sad because this woman that gave her virginity to this Michael dude, with no ring on her finger, with no marriage, with no certificate, with no commitment, with no standing before God, be without all of that. So this guy, <laughs> who are you, self? Who, who are you? You know, he can just come, dip in, dip out, and do what he wants to do because there's no commitment. There's nowhere that states that you are his, his lady or anything. <sighs> anyway, what I do not understand is that Sarah and Megan supposedly do not know about each other, right? But I'm thinking these days of social media, you know, people be taking snaps here and there and tagging people i just can't imagine how that would all go on and these are young people i am pretty sure that there is evidence somewhere on social media that michael and megan are also a thing and that michael and sarah are a thing like i am very confused obviously now they know about each other because once the show airs everybody will start following people on on their socials and telling them oh da, 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 you should have handled this that yo you know about this chick blah 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 so now they know about each other because we've been seeing sneak peeks of their meeting even this time they showed it here and there sneak peeks of Megan and Sarah actually meeting in real life but I don't know how many episodes down the line they're actually gonna let us see that because they're really they're really dragging this whole thing but anyway so they're walking uh, Michael and Megan so Michael goes to pick up Megan and they're walking in the airport and Michael is like I'm like, eh? I did not get what this man was saying at all what he was saying was I gotta see my PO by six I think pro officer by six I don't know I think something like that so he goes so this is his plan for his day he's gonna pick up you know his queen as he referred to her once Megan and then he's gonna take her with him and they're going to this PO office they're driving around Megan is still all smile she's so happy you know and it's like not none of the places that they're going looks familiar to Michael so she's holding a phone and trying to figure it out and then <laughs> the car stops and he kind of gives his phone like it's like out the window and I'm like who is he giving this phone to turns out it's a producer so the producer is like uh yeah I think we're in the wrong city so it has to take them 40 minutes to get to the other city to get to where the parole uh, officers office is and I'm like but has he had to report already a few times since he's been out like they wouldn't just let you wander around like that without actually going back I was very confused I didn't I did not get that at all but um, yeah anyway so they're in the wrong city and they're just driving around the wrong place nothing looks familiar to him so now they have 40 minutes to get to a place that they're supposed to be in in 30 minutes so basically they're gonna be late so he's driving mad more mad 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 on the road he's like light me a cigarette and Megan does that he's now driving with one hand and smoking and driving really fast and I'm like so these producers then eh? hmm. first of all y'all know about Megan and Sarah y'all know that these two are with Michael because a half of the camera crew is following Sarah and half of the camera crew is following Megan okay they know the full picture and I'm just like for TV eh? just because of TV you're going to just let these people live in the dark I, I don't even know but anyway it makes for good TV I suppose but essentially they're you know people are messing with other people's lives withholding information like this but I guess at the end of the day 
They gotta be like Michael's mom, who is like, I don't want any part of this. I know too, but I'm not gonna say anything to nobody. If anybody's gonna say anything, it's Michael himself. And at the end of the day, that makes sense because these reality TV shows, they're trying to show us reality. <sighs> they get there. And the police officers there are like, listen, we own Michael. The state of New York owns Michael. So he was late. He shouldn't have been late to his appointment. And by this point, it's like, what, 10 minutes later or something like that? They cuff him. They cuff this man. And he goes back to jail. Just like that. Because of what? Because he was picking up Megan. <laughs> Everyone is in the car. He's like, Sarah's blowing up my phone. And I'm like, wow. What, what would Megan think in that instance? Like, why is she blowing up his phone? I mean, according to Megan, that's just the mother of his child. Like, according to Megan, they don't have any dealings with each other. So why would she be blowing up his phone? Mm. These parole people, they don't play. They mean what they mean. Like, come on time. They cuff him everything. And then in the um, confessional kind of thing, they kind of film Megan. And he's like, oh yeah, they cuffed him. He's going back to jail. And she seems oddly calm and I was like why is this woman so calm um, but later on in another filming she explains how she's just tired of crying because the last time he left because supposedly his parole officer came around um, to his house like his him and Sarah's marital home um, and he wasn't there like and he had to rush off and leave um, Megan just there um, yeah, she cried, she cried her eyes out. So I was expecting the same kind of reaction. So I was like, this taping, when do they film these people? Because first of all, have all of you noticed that these people are wearing the same clothes for all these 12 episodes, like in the confessionals, they're wearing the same outfits, which means they, it's like they taped everything and then started filming the confessionals, like per, like for every episode kind of thing. Uh, it's very confusing to me. Michael's mom visits, um, pays a visit to Megan. Michael told her where she is and goes there and, and she's like, she had to go. Not she has to go. She had to go. She, she even had to go past tense. She had to go. She should have been gone, but she's still here. She had to go. She keeps saying it. She said, <laughs> she said that in the last episode. She's saying it again. Mommy has had enough. Like she's had enough of this foolishness because at the end of the day yes her son is not right for having these two women but at the end of the day Megan also well Megan actually doesn't know that this guy is still married see this is where the problem is but Megan is also the same person who said she wanted to come out to where he was and meet Aviana who is the daughter of Sarah and Michael and didn't really mention, mention Sarah at all and you put yourself in Sarah's, Sarah's shoes whether you're married or not, you would still be that kid's mom, right? So anybody that's going to have dealings with your kid, you would want to know them first before they just jump in and have dealings with your kid. That would kind of make sense, right? But anyway, so the mom is so short and even Megan notices this. Notices this. She comes to the door and she's kind of just giving information about Michael and how long he's going to be in prison for and stuff like that. And... You know, Megan is like, so when will he? And the mom's like, I don't know. So like, do you know when he? W I, I don't know. I don't know anything. And she just just goes on like that. So do you think he will be? I don't know. All I know is that he's in jail. He's going to jail. And the mom, you can tell she's kind of salty because she knows that it's kind of because of Megan and you know all these other distractions that her son is in jail right now. And I'm like, this woman is acting kind of calm, actually, if you ask me. Like, some moms maybe wouldn't even have told Megan, to be honest. I told her all she needed to know, and now she can go. She says to Megan something like, try and get as much sleep as I can, which is none. Like, oh, okay, now now we're just throwing shade over here. And, and Megan is just like, I waited two years for him, so, you know, I can wait a bit longer and all this type of stuff. And then it just dawned on me, wow, this woman also just waited two years for Michael to get out of prison. Like she's highly and heavily invested in this relationship, as you can imagine. For him, it's whatever. He had two chicks on the, on the outside, you know, calling him and, 
you know, whispering sweet nothings into his ear over the phone and keeping him, you know, happy while he was up in there. Uh, but yeah, the fact of the matter is that uh, he was married all this while. He was married and he had a kid with his wife. So I don't know. But anyway, moving right on along, because that that just ended really sadly. I mean, what you when you're watching this show, what you never kind of think about is that oh yeah, these people they can reoffend and they can go back. They can go back to jail, and jail time is not is serious um, out there in the states. Okay, we're moving on to Caitlyn and Matt. Now, so Caitlyn in the last episode, you know, her mom had passed away in her sleep very very sad episode like i felt so so sad for her because here's this woman who you know fell in love with this um inmate matt and because of that and wanted to live with him her mom kicked her out and her relationship with her mom was kind of rocky anyway but that didn't help and then she goes to meet with her mom and kind of reconcile things and kind of see so that the mom can see matt and all that and then kind of has an attitude and is kind of angry. There's still some anger boiling deep inside of her um, for everything that has happened in the past. And then it turns out that's the last time she sees her. Like, it's so, so sad. And it's like she doesn't have anybody. I'm pretty sure I've seen Caitlyn with friends before, but you don't see them very often coming about. Um, it, it, she just keeps saying that she, you know, in the last episode, she said she felt like an orphan and she really has nowhere to go. He's staying with Matt and his mom. And um, this episode, it becomes apparent that Matt's dad actually died as well whilst Matt was in prison. Caitlin is talking to Matt's mom and it, she's very helpful. And at first, Caitlin's mom was like, she had to go. <laughs> Caitlin's mom was kind of like having a Michael's mom kind of attitude. Like she was, she was like, she got to go. She had to go. He had to go. They all had to go. But uh now that this has all happened she's like very understanding and very caring and once again i see this lady standing in the kitchen whipping up something it looks like breakfast um i always see this woman standing in the kitchen and i don't know what the other two are doing but anyway so and she's now very supportive because obviously this is a very hard time matt at some point kind of seems over it i mean he's got his own emotional things that he's dealing with obviously he lost his dad as well when he was in prison he's he has he has his own um, coping mechan mechanism that helps him deal with stuff and I think it's be it's basically shutting everything out and shutting it all down and just dealing with everything day by day and not having to think too much because if you think about it if you think too much about everything it is it can be highly stressful obviously and he just doesn't want to do that he just want to live wants to live life kick back a little and yeah and Matt is talking about uh, Caitlyn not letting him be there for her because she's like very short and she's not really answering him nicely but the same way at the same time when he answers her it's not very like they're both not being very helpful to each other like they're not communicating in a very great way then they go to the, um, the funeral house and the ashes of Caitlyn's mom are there and she's going to collect them now this sister walks out looking all kinds of flickalicious okay hair braided up she looks amazing i don't know if she knew she was going to be on tv but anyway so she just looks like this very warm and amazing person just like a good person for this kind of job she gives caitlin a big old hug and she's she's ready to talk she's ready to sit down and basically give them a free counseling session be like okay so matt is like i don't know how to talk to her she keeps shutting me down and this woman's like okay let's talk about it and these people don't really talk they don't really communicate um Kaylin gets up and goes away. Then Matt walks up and goes away. I've had enough of this. Boom. Then they're gone. I've had enough of this. Boom. Then they're gone. Then they come back. They just kept rotating like that. And nobody was really sitting down, even though it was hard. And staying seated and figuring it out. That is communicating. Sometimes it's painful, but you have to stick it out. One thing that this um, sister said that was very interesting was that Matt needs to be reprogrammed. And I guess that's really true. When people go through very traumatic experiences, obviously prison being one of them, um, and they have this kind of way of dealing with things emotionally, they need to be completely rewired. And I don't know how you do that other than loads of counseling, 
And I would say a lot of prayer. You need a lot of Jesus up in this thing because it is hard. It is very tough. And some of these things, they're not things that the human brain can actually understand. Like, why me? Why am I going through this? Why can't I, you know, get a job? Why this? I know I'm skilled. I know I can do this. But why Why do I keep falling into, into trouble? All these type of things. They're sometimes very hard things to deal with. We don't know how to deal with them. And then... You can come to a point where you're just complacent and you're like, okay, this is it. This is my life and I'm going to live it just like this and be fine with it. And I think that's kind of where Matt is right now. And I would hope that Caitlyn would be the one that can help reprogram him. Because I do think they're, they're, they're a cool fit. They're cool. You know, she, she was really like, when this all started, she was really, really into him. But it just shows how... <laughs> Just having a relationship online alone isn't really, or online or over the phone or whatever, alone is not really the same as being together in real life and having to deal with the person's up days and down days. I mean, when you're picking the phone, you pick that phone up when you feel like it, when you feel like talking. But yeah, so that's, that's their story. This was very short. Clint and Tracy. So some cousin or was it a cousin anyway cousin called brad or is it brady anyway is in the car with clint and they go to the prison and they're gonna see tracy now clint is talk Cl clint by the way looks good he had a little haircut or whatever you know every time you used to see him in the last few episodes his hair always looked like he he'd been through it and he has been through it but yeah, you'd see him in every single clip, he was just doing this to his hair. And just as if he was about to pull his hair out. So anyway, he got a cute little haircut and he's looking, he's looking nice. So he's in the car and it's like, I will never stop paying legal fees for, you know, for Tracy, his goddess. And yeah, this guy is devoted. <laughs> I don't know why he wants to pay legal fees for a woman that stole his rental car. Which means he now owns 21000 $21,000 but apparently and I, I have been wondering this I don't know if anybody can tell me Clint keeps using phones because this woman took his phone as well Tracy took his phone when she left him whose phone is this man using because then he was walking around with a phone with like a pink uh, phone case I was thinking okay this who's, whose phone is this I think it was one of the producers phone or whatever now he's got another phone with a red phone case like, wh whose phone is he using? How is he just getting new phones just like that? Like, I actually would like to see what these producers do, like, how it actually really works. How you make this show actually work. Because in real life, things don't work as quickly as that. Like, where did he get that new phone from? The man ain't got no money. He owns these people 21000 and spent a lot of money, like, maxed out everything for when Tracy came out of prison. I don't even know. I don't know how stuff works up in there. But anyway, speaking about the phone, gets to the, so he's, he's on the phone whilst he's driving or whatever, maybe he stopped driving, I don't know. And then they phone him, the prison phone him, and they're like, yeah, you're not going to be able to see Tracy. I don't know why. No reason was given. He gets out of the car, swears a whole lot in front of this cousin Brad person, swears a whole lot, really is throwing a fit, hitting, bumping, stomping things. And then throws his phone into the distance. Did I see that correct? Did you see that? He just throws his phone into the... Whose phone is that, my friend? Please, I beg. Who, whose phone are you just throwing out there like that? You don't have money. Keep your phone on you. You know, don't pay the stupid tax like Judge Lynn Toller would say. You know, this is... In fact, if you think about it, all these people are paying the stupid tax because none of them is doing anything that is financially wise. None of them. But anyway, at least he's loyal. You can say that about Clint. Like, the way he treats this woman, he is loyal. He will go to the ends of the earth to make his goddess, Tracy, happy. It's kind of cute that he calls her his goddess. A lot of people are saying he should really stop calling her that. But, hey, that's... It's, it's, uh, it's uh, endearing, I suppose. He, he likes to call her that. And he feels that way about her. So, it's kind of cute. And we come to Michael and Sarah whole new say whole different segment altogether so Michael and Sarah so Sarah is sitting in a restaurant with Michael's mom and Aviana her daughter 
and the kid is kind of sad that her daddy is not there and wondering where the daddy is and Sarah is saying I guess what is the same old same old daddy's gotta work and Sarah's like listen I'm used to this and whenever they come to Sarah's segment and they kind of show her her name and her age I'm like so this one is 24 years old hey my goodness she's going through way too much drama for a 24 year old I get it you have a kid that's already a lot and very life-changing um, but I bet she wouldn't change it for the world because kids are amazing. But then My question is so but um, Yeah, why this is not how you're supposed to spend your your 20s your your early mid 20s Like I feel like she's missing out on a lot and when I'm talking about missing out on a lot I'm not talking about hitting the town with friends and all the rest of it. I'm talking about missing out on peace of mind You can have a kid and be married that young and have peace of mind this girl's getting none of it. She's really going through it. It's, it's really sad. But anyway, so Sarah gives an account of what happened to Michael in the whole Michael situation. And she's just like, he was late for parole and so now he's in jail. But why was he late for parole? Like, she cannot figure it out at all. And uh, yeah, she calls, she calls um, BS on the whole thing. Which, yeah, rightfully so. Yeah. Anyway. And then her, you know, Michael's mom is just sitting across from her, knowing everything that she knows and not saying anything. I mean, that must be hard, but at the same time, I still don't know how much I agree with that. I, this is my thing. I think Michael's mom should be putting more pressure on Michael to tell the truth. Just like how with like just one sentence, you need to do what right by your wife kind of thing. That small speech that she did, could turn his mind around and he was like, okay, I gotta get rid of Megan. She had to go, <laughs> okay? So, just like how she could do that, I feel like in the same way, she should put more pressure on Michael to come clean. Be like, look, this will be for the better, you'll be so free, you have peace of mind, you have more time to spend with your family, with your wife and kids, you'll not be at risk of losing your, your wife or your kids, you, you know, you'll be serious with this parole thing and be able to go through it successfully. Like, this is the kind of advice that I'm hoping that Michael's mom would give um, but you know here we are so also anytime I see Sarah I look at the engagement ring I'm like what's that engagement ring not bought by Michael for Megan and now it is on Sarah's hand I'm like how does this even fit was this meant for Megan really or was this meant for Sarah all along like I think there's some stuff that they say especially in their confessionals but they don't actually do or mean and never intended to do I think I think that's how they're just messing with our minds because I, I can't fit some of these puzzle pieces together it ends up with Sarah saying I'm ready for some answers and guess what then these people start rolling the credits I'm like my friend so they give sneak peeks here and there of Sarah and Megan meeting it didn't happen this time it didn't happen the last time it didn't happen in the time before that they've been showing that for so many episodes and I've seen sneak peeks of it here and there, but I don't want to go watch it because I want to see it, you know, I want to see it in context. I don't I don't just want to see a little sneak peek somewhere and they're going to let us wait five episodes before we actually get to see um, how that, you know, how that interaction actually goes down. Now, you thought we were done. No. <laughs> Last couple, Brittany and Marcelino. So, you see them, they're in the park and they're with Giovanni, which is Brittany's um son with another man and they're having such a good time and it's so cute to see marcelino get along with giovanni i'm so happy that Brittany is finally like look i'm over amanda i'm here with my man i've got my son and i've got a baby on the way and it's actually so cute because she's kind of looking at him like and he's like overjoyed he's so happy you know what when, when giovanni and um, marcelino were playing in the park did that kid really run and say, you can't catch me, daddy? Or did he say, you can't catch me, buddy? I don't actually know what that kid said, but I was like, is, is he already calling Marcelino daddy? I don't know. A lot of people have a problem with that, like when step-parents come into the scene. And Marcelino, well, is he a step-parent? Step-boyfriend? step How do you even, how do you even call? Anyway. I don't know what that boy say, said there. If you know, just drop it in the comments below. But I was very confused by that. Anyway, I just love, I love Giovanni. That kid is so cute. 
so cute and really really friendly such a nice kid um, yeah it's really cute um, Marcelino is really happy he's doing a little dance and yeah that's the end of their segment so that is the end of all the peoples Whew. and I thought I'd have nothing to say but it was a lot that went on um, yeah so looking forward to next week's episode just go into the comment section drop whatever comments you have I'd love to hear from you guys and see what other people think I used to not understand review channels or people that did reviews but it's kind of interesting like when you're watching a series and you go and watch other people's reviews it's almost like you're watching it or you watch it together or it's almost like you're talking about a series or a show with a friend it's I think it's really cool so I hope I'm your pal and we're able to hang out and just discuss this show and yeah I hope you liked this video so make sure that if you're not already you hit that subscribe button because I have a lot of videos coming out all kinds of videos this is a lifestyle channel y'all it is everything we do everything up in here um, so yeah let me know what other shows you maybe think I should review I might do that and yeah I'll be back hopefully Lord willing next week with another review on love after lockup but into that time God bless make sure you hit bump stomp as zone on that subscribe button hit that notification bell and <laughs> struggle clap right there and yeah hope to see you soon and remember make time for glorious life see you in the next one mm -hmm.